All right, uh, everybody, let's get started. Uh, my name is uh, Chris Urban. I'm a delivery manager from Acquia. This is uh, the session titled Using a Mallet When You Really Need a Mjolnir. Mjolnir. Uh, so I just want to make sure everybody's in the right room. Make sure I'm in the right room. Okay. Um, so this is a little bit of a different session. Uh, uh, this is part of the new project management track uh, for DrupalCon. Um, this is not, uh, this is going to be interesting for me and for you. So I, why I'm telling you this is I'm looking for feedback. I'm interested in your thoughts on what I'm going to go through today. Um, I'm curious to know uh, everyone's take and experience. So I don't want this to be purely a one-way discussion. Um, I do encourage questions and feedback. All right, so before we uh, get to started, let me just give you some background. First of all, a Mjolnir is not a new Drupal 8 theme. It is the Hammer of Thor, all right, Norse god. And basically, it is used to demolish mountains. And these are the kinds of projects we have, right, um, in the project management world of building Drupal sites. So I thought this was the uh, best way to approach this. Uh, what really is your best tool to demolish the mountains that you encounter every day? Uh, so what I hope to cover um, is uh, basically two very important questions. Uh, I've been using Jira for a pretty long time on a variety of projects scaling from very small with only, let's say, two people to very large with multiple development teams, multiple product owners, multiple points of confusion. And um, the experiences that I've presented at Drupal Camps before have always led to one uh, common question that I get asked probably more than anything else, and that is, what else can we use besides Jira? And so the point of this session is to try and cover what is out there right now that I think uh, poses uh, some of the good components that match what Jira provides right now. The other important question, and because this is at the end of the day, so this is a good time to do this, uh, this is really important to me, what else has Philadelphia, which is where I'm from, contributed? And so uh, I'm gonna intersperse a little morsels of Philadelphia goodness for you. Uh, by the way, did anybody uh, here go to the pre-note this morning? Did you enjoy it? Okay, good, all right, excellent. All right, so let's talk about uh, some of the key things we're gonna go through today. Um, I wanna make sure that what my assumptions are are the same as what your assumptions are. First, um, I'm assuming that you're already familiar with Kanban and Scrum, uh, so by show of hands, who here is using one or both of these processes in their projects? Okay, good, excellent. Uh, so the next question is, uh, you have a need for project management help, I'm assuming, because you're here. Um, and you might be or have tried using Google Sheets or Excel to help manage those projects, because that's probably the first place you go to. Is anyone using Google Sheets or Excel right now to help manage their projects? It's okay, give it a minute. All right, good. Um, so my preference in assembling all of these projects for your review today my preference has been for open source projects. I'm looking for things that I can do on my own. I can self-host. I'm willing to pay for cloud hosting, but the idea is that it's in the Drupal spirit of community and contribution. I'm looking for something that is being developed openly um, first. That's my first preference. Ideally, no licensing fees for the software, like I said, but if there's something that's out there that I can pay five, 10, $20 a month, I'm, I'm very happy with that. So that's one of the, um, one of the key assumptions. Uh, so what are the things that I look for? Um, a whole variety of things, right? So first of all, project planning. I'm trying to find some tools that allow me to do resource allocation, preferably some sort of timing so I know who I need to have on the project when. I'm looking for something that'll help me manage my backlog. I'm getting countless requests from product owners. I need a place to put those and manage them and help the product owner prioritize them. So this is before we even get to a sprint. And then finally, in within a sprint, if we're doing this in Kanban, if we're using uh, Scrum, some way to manage sprints. Um, and this kind of includes being able to separate out those requests as user stories, bugs, tasks, issues, whatever you want to call them. 
um, being able to measure what kind of progress you're making, uh, some way to track what the effort is, if maybe if it's just recording time or some other method, and then ideally some way to do reporting on all of this because, of course, client wants to know where they're spending their dollars, what are they getting for their buck. So some way to turn that all into reports. All right, so that's the formal part of this. Now, come back to Philly. Uh, just to give you Philadelphia fun fact number one. So Agile, as you know, the Agile manifest was not concocted by 17 guys at the Snowbird Ski Resort in Colorado. It was actually a bunch of guys waiting for cheesesteaks in Philly. And the, the real important fact here is that I'm actually the 18th guy right down there. You can see me. I'm at the end of the blue arrow. So I'm the missing 18th person on the Agile open source. That's a joke. I'm just kidding. I'm trying to provide some levity. It's the end of the day, right? You want to go home. Um, all right. Philadelphia fun fact number two. Ben Franklin is credited with saying a story point saved is a story point earned. Ben Franklin actually invented story points. We've had a very long history of agile development in Philadelphia. It goes back hundreds of years, and I just want to make sure that you're, you're, we are properly attribute uh, where it's due. All right, now seriously, let's get back to uh, Sprint Project Tools. So first one I have up, uh, Trello. So anyone here familiar with Trello or is using it now? Okay, great. So Trello is one of my favorites. It's a great go-to um, package. It's very simple. It's intuitive. Um, you can start for free, so it meets criteria in that respect. But it is not open source, but it is so heavily adopted and a great place to start in an Agile or Scrum methodology um, that we find a lot of people using it, um, and you're a testament to that fact. Um, you can obviously upgrade. You get a lot of nice integrations with Evernote, GitHub, a lot of other things. Uh, you can just go to their website. Don't take my word for it. Pretty reasonable, $8 a month. If you want to go really crazy, you can get to the Enterprise or Premium, which gives you like a secure um, uh, single sign-on, plus encryption, plus extra security measures, support on demand, and all of that. So first question I have is uh, uh, who is not using Trello? Who has not ever used it? All right, so that's why I want to make sure I cover this. If you've not used this, it's worth taking a look at. So uh, the basic premise of Trello is a Kanban board, and you start by first setting up your, your columns. Um, you add the columns you want. You start typing in your cards. Um, and so here I've got a pre-populated board, and you'll see this over and over again through the other projects, so there'll be some consistency. Um, this is a completely fake board for putting together a Drupal 8 website. Um, you fill in your tasks. When the tasks are done, you move it to a column. Uh, you can apply labels. You can apply comments. Did that stop? What did I do? There we go. Uh, you can assign it to members of your team. You can assign it a due date. Where's, oh, 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 what did I do? Back. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I do that right. Right? Let's move this. I lost my mouse. Yikes. Give me one second here. I think that. Let's try that again. with me one second and go okay there we go that's better all right so let's jump ahead here uh, so uh, the nice part about Trello is you can um, the basic elements that you need for tracking work you can add checklists you can assign the tasks to different people on your team um, there's some other nice little benefits um, each card actually has its own unique email, right? So you can actually go and send comments via email. And so here I've got a comment that I mailed in and it automatically assigns it to the ticket. Little known trick. Um, each uh, card can be customized with a label. Uh, so they come with the basic color coding and you can see here I've just assigned some basic categories. So this helps to kind of see what you're working on, right? You can see I've got red and purple. 
Um, and this is set up so that you can go back and filter what you're seeing on the board. So you can filter by those tasks only. So if I want to look at only administrative or I only want to look at UX, I can filter that list. Similarly, you can filter by user. So who's assigned what tickets at any given point? And this is really helpful. You can also assign by, filter by the due date. When are those tickets due? So what are the current, pro, what are the current cards that need to be done first? Uh, so really quick, one other thing I just want to point out. This is uh, stickers. I'm not sure what they're there for. But uh, these are really handy. The calendar and voting, um, those help, and card aging. Those really help with keeping track of where the tickets are. Um, so you can go to a calendar view, and that will let you see the due dates for all the calendar, uh, for all the tickets. And voting will allow all the people on a team to upvote or downvote tickets. So you can do this as a group, as a part of a development team, what tickets you want to assign on. Yes, question in the back. So, okay, so the question for everybody, um, with multiple teams on multiple projects, I would first start by keeping the projects, the clients at the very least, at the projects on separate boards. So Trello will allow you to jump from board to board, and out of the box, it's free, unlimited boards. So you can add as many people as you want, and you have the control of assigning which people to which board. So you can have segment teams, you know, team A is working on this board for this client, and another board for another client or another project, keep, and you keep them separated. But there is no cross-pollination of tickets between those two boards. No, correct. No, you can't. So that's the trick. Um, so uh, that other plug in the card aging, this is a little other fun thing. If you have really stale cards, they start looking old, corny. But it's kind of handy, so you can see that, you know, I need install in Ubuntu, and Ubuntu hasn't happened yet. Um, so now, um, a couple other shortcuts I want to make sure I, I tell you, if you've not used Trello, or if you've only used them a little bit, uh, similar to Jira, and that's still, remember, my Molnir that I'm comparing everything to, there are some nice keystroke commands that you can use that you don't have to actually move your mouse over to each card, click on it, and edit it. Um, you can do a label, which is just L. You can uh, edit any card by hitting E. You can assign a card back to yourself with a space bar. You can filter with F. I'm going to write all these down. You'll see in a second. Um, and you can, um, um, did I say label card? And B, uh, you can switch between the boards. So if you have more than one board up at the top left where it says Chris's website, if I go and hit B, I think I, did this just show it? Um, that's right. That was right here. So if I hit B, play. Um, I may automatically switch between cards. Uh, F brings up the filter, and so on and so on. So these are all really um, useful uh, tricks. Let's see if I get that. There we go. Um, another one is if you have multiple tasks, right? Because you're often starting a board from scratch. You open a new board. If you have a project that you do over and over again, build one board as your template, and then copy and repeat that. So you don't keep repeating, entering everything in. If you do have a long list that you want to bring in, you can open up one ticket and copy and paste from Excel, and it will automatically spit it out as multiple cards. So you don't have to keep copying and pasting each one into its own line. All right, so that's Trello. Oh, last one. Uh, there is a couple, I don't have it here today because we don't have enough time. There is a couple of uh, projects on GitHub. Uh, there's one, and if you're interested in it, come see me afterwards and I'll give you the address, um, where you can actually connect a Google Sheet with Jira, uh, see, there I go, with Trello, and it will automatically import all of your records, all of your columns over into the matching fields in Trello. So very often, because you've started with a Google Sheet or you've started with Excel, you want to move it everything over that will help you do it in mass. Um, really handy. Okay, so Trello is, let's call it, you know, first one. Um, there's some two more projects that I want you to see that are in the Trello 
uh, vein. The first is a rescue board. Uh, it's a really nice alternative. It too has no member restrictions and it spins up really quickly on an Amazon web uh, server instance. So you can set it up out of the box for free, Amazon hosting for free, and you have your own instance. So you're self-managing and self-hosting, right? Which is nice. So you don't have to rely necessarily, not that Trello costs anything, but it's really now independently, it's running on your instance. You can download it and install it, but for out of the box, uh, I set up an instance in you know under an hour. How long does it take to spin up a web instance? Um, and it will allow you, because they're gearing for this, they allow you to import from Trello. So when you're in Trello, you can do a JSON export of all your cards. Let's say that master template you had set up, and now you can spin, spin that up in rest your board. Uh, one caveat, um, if you look at their issues board, is that there are some performance issues with NIE. Not that anybody here is using IE, right? Good, okay. So uh, here is a quick, this is a, the rest you board, and you'll see a lot of similarities. Um, so here I'm importing my JSON from that project that you just saw in Trello. And this is that same project now in rest you board. Um, so the same thing, there's cards and columns. You can assign the cards, you can assign labels. Um, the catch with this though is that they do not come over cleanly. Um, the JSON doesn't include what your custom titles are. It'll just label them as green, yellow, magenta. So you do have to go back and fix those. Not a, not a deal breaker. Um, but it too has um, upvoting and logging activities and you can filter all of this within the card. You can roll a uh, view the tasks per person. Uh, there's a lot more um, like things that you wish Trello had added in rest your board. So if you are a power Trello user, I strongly uh, suggest taking a look at it. So for example, here is a list. Um, now we have a list of resources. You can see who's tasked with what. Um, there's a lot of support with um, third party plugins. You have to set up an IMAP server for sending out notifications. Uh, it has a connect in with uh, Elasticsearch and any other third party APIs. There's a nice list view of all your tickets. This is one difference. Uh, actually, let me go back. That was too quick. Try to speed this up because I you know, want to be sensitive for time. So a list view. One thing you'll notice here, uh, a la Jira, all the tickets have a number. In Trello, they don't. So you just have a ticket. Uh, and because I'm anal like that, I like to have a number assigned to it so that everybody is talking about the same ticket. I'm talking about ticket number five. Even though there's another one that sounds like it, now we are all on the same page. And you can set that numbering to be whatever you want. Um, you can't get this list out of easily out of Trello, but now you can sort and add columns um, and you can see you know, what the labels are assigned here. Um, and the calendar view is nice. So you can sort by votes uh, and so on. Um, calendar view is nice. It gives you the, you know, the deadlines, the due dates that you've been assigned. And it has a nice little Gantt chart built in. The catch, you cannot edit the Gantt chart. It's only for display. So you cannot change the dates or the uh, time allocations, but it is a nice output. Um, and then last thing here was, was that the last thing? That was the last thing. But a lot more little details that Trello does not have. So worth taking a look. All right, time to be fun again. Philadelphia fact number three, Betsy Ross invented Drupal because it actually was Brupal first. And there was a typo when they transcribed in that fancy penmanship and that's how it became Drupal. Okay, sorry, dad jokes, you know, it's the end of the day, what do you want? <laughs> All right, another one, uh, another Trello uh, type project. This is an interesting one. Uh, it was originally Libre board. Um, if you're familiar with Libre, that's like a whole, how do I put it, a whole uh, tree of software projects that are geared in true open source project style. Um, it was to Trello and is defunct. It was basically shut down as a copyright infringement. Um, and it has re-emerged now as wecan.io. I can never, I don't know why they use this top level domain, that's just me. Um, but the, it's the next iteration and it's brand new, maybe three months. Um, 
It runs on Sandstorm, completely open source, basically a Meteor JS front end. Uh, you can set it up pretty easily. You need a SQLite database. Um, very, very rudimentary, but um, it does a lot of the basic Trello stuff, and it's very open source, very new. I would keep an eye on it. Not sure if it's fully there yet, um, but definitely, like I said, definitely worth keeping an eye on. Weekend.io. So you want to know how agile we are in Philly? We're so agile, our skyline is a burn down chart, okay? <laughs> Sorry. I was struggling. <laughs> uh, it's, it's actually from, it's right behind me to the right is where the series is. So yeah, it depends on your, it could be a burn up chart if you're in Camden. So, all right, next one, Asana. Has everyone here heard of Asana or used it? All right, so this, this tool is growing on me. Um, I've been playing with this for uh, three, four, five months now. Um, it's, it's pretty hefty. It's got a lot of stuff to it. I'm, not, I'm still a Jira guy, I'm sorry. But it's, um, it's not too bad. Um, it does have some merits, and so we'll go through them. Um, it, it is kind of one of your all-in-one tools, so like a base camp. It manages tasks, it's got a calendar, it has its own integrated chat, it's free up to 15 users, so your typical small agency, you know, I've got a dozen devs. You can do a premium for $5 a user. It has Gantt charting, which I like, and it has what I think is really handy uh, is a Chrome extension. So for bug tracking, if you're in development on a site, you add this plugin to your browser, and we'll automatically log a ticket with the URL that you're logging the ticket for, which is the first thing a client always forgets to do, right? Oh, I saw a bug. Well, where was it? Uh, I don't remember. Well, so now there's no excuse. Uh, it has to be in Chrome, but really, really pretty handy. All right, so Asana, on the left side, we have all our projects listed. Um, you have a task list that can be grouped, and so what I'm doing here is just basically moving tasks in under a task list. Each of those tasks can have assignments, they can have labels added, and then you can add a checklist of subtasks within it. So for example, in here I've got, uh, I think it's on this one, I'll put in a list of Drupal module, modules um, so you can do them as subtasks. Right, so here, and there's my checklist. So that's the subtasks within the task, within a task list. So in Jira parlance, it's kind of like an epic, a story, and a subtask. Now, in Chrome, I have the toggle timer installed, so you can do time tracking with that. Uh, toggle is a completely separate tool for just doing time tracking. Um, and uh, the calendar allows you to drag and drop the tasks so you can change the deadlines. But there are two catches, uh, and actually, let me pause it real quick. So number one is that if you have subtasks, those won't show up, only the parent tasks deadline. So you do not see that, you know, task, subtask one has a deadline of so on. You have to go into the ticket to see that. And if uh, it does not have a date, of course, then it doesn't show up. But, you know, you would think, well, it doesn't show up. So you don't know that you're missing the task if you're looking at the calendar. Um, so worth, worth keeping an eye on that. Um, there's a nice list view, so you have, again, you know, what you've worked on. Um, you can see who was assigned. Here I'm showing that the tasks that were done. Um, and you can go back, am I going back now, the calendar view? Right, so I'm showing that parent task, and it wasn't showing the child tasks under it. Uh, what's nice here is that this does can go, this does allow you to go cross team to some extent. You can have multiple tasks, and so this is kind of your integrated chat across all projects, and then you can have a chat within the project. So it's like a sub-channel room in Slack, for lack of a better explanation. Um, and you can reference the projects within chat, and then now in here, this is the chat within the project itself, and then you can also reference other users. And like any other chat client, it automatically connects with the matching user. So that's handy, that's not too bad. So remember, 15 users, free, out of the box. Worth, worth checking out if you have small teams. Any questions on that? All right, let's move on. 
So next thing is Instagant. I just love the name, Instagant. It's like everything should be like that. Instagant is a Gantt tool that connects to Asana. It's a separate piece. You have to turn it on, but it allows you to do more of that intuitive planning, which is you have a Gantt chart and you want to drag the ends in the beginnings uh, of the allocations. Uh, you can assign due dates. You can assign the start dates. You can note the progress in the Gantt, in the Gantt chart items and you can convert tasks into milestones. So this has been really handy um, from the perspective of setting the project up. You get all your tasks in Asana, you jump over to Instagant, and now you can shift all the dates around so you don't have to be going back and forth to a calendar. It's a little bit more intuitive. And then when you're all done, you can export it out. So this is now the same project list from Asana. You're in Instagant, and you see of my list of tasks. Uh, you can collapse and expand uh, there's a little filter by user or by task, uh, and then you can expand out the subtask. So you see there's no date assigned or it only had a start date. So now I can go in and say, you know, this task is going to take X long. Uh, it's color coded because the, today's date is in blue and once we're past it, it's in red. If it's completed, then it turns green. You can mark it to say I'm 50% complete. I still have work to do. I'm going to assign it the next week's worth of work. You can see how it does a nice little color coding so you can get a visual indicator of its progress. It's a nice summary. So for a reporting perspective as a reporting tool, um, it allows that um, output of progress in one single chart. Another nice thing uh, here, I think this is where I'm going to show this, if you exceed the bounds of what was assigned within the uh, first part of the project, you'll get a nice little warning and says, do you want to really push this out? Did I do that here? No, I got to the end of it. Um, but that visual indicator, that to me is really, really helpful. That's like, you know, your client can see, yep, I'm halfway there. Okay, and this is free add-on onto Asana. All right, next one. Since we're talking about Gantt charts, the other one I really like, a Ganty. So this is built by a German outfit. So if you go to the website, you'll get it in Deutsch first, so switch to English. Um, but it is completely free. It's an open beta. And you have unlimited projects, unlimited teams, unlimited tasks. It does one thing. It does it really well. Um, it's, from my point of view, I think really uh, great for small or medium-sized teams. So let's go through this really quick. Um, again. My tasks on the left, you can uh, uh, collapse or um, expand out, and again, the same kind of filtering by user or by task. You click on, an, on a task and assign it. You can fill in a description. You get the Gantt chart. Let's give me some more room here. You can adjust the focus of you know, how much you're looking at. You can switch to the, let's see if I do this. You can, there, so I'm assigning it to U1. And I'm assigning another task to C-Dog. All right. So what's nice about this is that there's a toggle here. You can go back and view uh, a dashboard view. So you have it not only in the Gantt chart format, but you also have it in a dashboard view, which allows you to now see list views by assignee or by date. So you can do you know, this week, this month, everybody on the team, or just one person, and print out basically their planned uh, assignments over whatever that time period is. Uh, you can output a PDF, handy, and you can filter, you know, pretty obvious, and create a PDF. All right, um, so here I'm gonna go back now to the Gantt chart um, format. I'm gonna go and add a new project phase. Prepare the server, prepare the server. I'm going to change the color because I don't like teal, which is pretty, it's a nice UI. Um, and I'm going to start typing in the tasks. So first thing I need to do is uninstall Windows XP. Nobody's using that, right? It's a joke. I'll type in some tasks. You see it just fills in automatically. Um, and now I can take those, right? It shows me which task it is. I'm going to 
assign it to CDOG and stretch it out because it's going to take me two weeks to install Drupal. And you see it's warning me that it's exceeding the parent task, so it automatically extends that out to match. Now, truth be told, it's the other way around. Really, it's going to take me only a day to install Drupal, and it's going to take me two weeks to uninstall Windows XP. So all I'm doing here is just fitting those and re rearranging the order. OK. Um, so what's nice here is the fact that it's automatically extending and adjusting that timeline based on those subtasks. I don't know if you noticed, but if I go back um, and extend that timeline, it'll extend everything correspondingly. So uh, now I can see all the pieces together. I'm moving this to adjust back to the other part of the project. And then I again see that updated in the dashboard. So if I want to see everything from that part of the project too, I'm only looking at this week and it's beyond this week. So I got to change to this month and now I see all those tasks. That's it. Pretty easy. So now I can get a nice output of the plan for the rest of the week, mail this around. Um, one thing I should note, all the projects that I've gone through so far, all of them have built-in email notifications, which is really handy or annoying. So if I'm the only one on the project, I'm getting all these notifications. Hey, you were supposed to be doing add modules. Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Are you doing it? Which is actually good for me. Um, but it's a nice, nice little feature that's built in. All right. It's painful, I know. Sorry. Philadelphia, fun fact, Philadelphia actually means city of brotherly code. Did you know that? Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so let's uh, change gears for a minute. We talked about Ganty, uh, Gantt sharding and resource allocation. A um, couple of things I want to include here because I've done this in other presentations and it's a, a big one. In sprint planning grooming is one session, one part of sprints we like to do a lot. Pointing your tickets is always, uh, can be a challenge, especially if you have remote teams, developers, in multiple time zones, you can't get them all in Slack or in a Hangout or on the phone. Um, so in order to keep it fair and keep that time to a minimum, I strongly recommend using something like pointing poker, uh, where you have, let's say, the tech lead enter in the title of the tickets, and then you can allow voting asynchronously online, and it has full visibility across everybody on the team, everybody who's participating. Um, typically, in a project we would run, the engagement manager or the project manager is monitoring the back channel for any kind of issues or questions that are being brought up, but the voting is fixed to like a typical Fibonacci sequence, and it's just time-based. So you'll see a countdown clock. If it gets too long, two, three minutes are being spent talking about the ticket, that means it probably should go back and back into discovery. Um, it really helps if you have a lot of stuff to get through, um, and just so you see how this works, if you go to pointingpoker.com, you can join an existing session or you can start a session. Uh, when you go to a new session, you just put in your name. You can join as an, um, uh, you can assign what the point values you want to use are. So here I'm just keeping it down to the basic Fibonacci sequence. You can join as an observer, which means you see the voting, but you don't actually participate. And so your technical architect will type in whatever the ticket is that we're talking about. So how many points is it going to be to install Drupal? I vote eight, CDOG votes eight, so we have consensus, great. Um, if you don't have consensus, let's say something else, you'll get the rankings, the list on the right of who, how many people voted for what size. And you have a running clock on the right, so you can keep an eye on how long it's taking everybody. Free, online, easy. If you're not using it, you should, if you have more than five or so people voting on tickets. Okay, next tool. So how many here are not project managers, but actually developers? All right, awesome. So this tool is up your alley. This is AgilePad. This is a project management tool for developers. And you'll see what I mean by this. It is a completely different take on the typical sprint board. It's very easy to use. It's completely text-based. So basically, you're going to pull up you know, your IDE, and you're going to edit a text file. That's essentially how this works. Now, that means there's some caveats. There's no error checking. There's no user recognition. So if you do at Chris and you misspell my name, it doesn't know that. 
if I make up a hashtag, you know, whatever, there's nothing to check that it's not being used already. It assumes that you are, want to use that hashtag. So the way this works, it's very simple. You can assign your tasks with a status using the percent. You give it a, a hashtag for a tag or an at for a person. And from that simple text file, it'll spit out list and calendar views in a Kanban board style. It's free and there's a premium version for $5 a month, but the free version is awesome. So let me show you how this works. Hopefully this won't be too fast. Same project. Uh, I put in some start dates. I copy and paste my list. That little uh, bracket minus is a task. You'll see the cheat sheet down on the bottom right. The section is the triple bang. I'll fix that in a second. And uh, there we go. So that's a wrap it up phase. Okay. So now I'm going to give that some tags, right? This is a pain in the ass one. It's 13 points. This is five points. So you can size it like that with the little, uh, what's it called, a carrot, and give it some tags so that you can identify and filter out those tickets later. You can give them status. So those are all marked done. These are in progress. These are ready to go. And then you can add comments. And I don't do it here. I backed out of it, but a triple right caret is uh, a individual comment. Uh, so a person can comment on a ticket. It'll show up in the text file. And then a milestone is with the uh, 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 slammer. Okay, so I assign the tickets, right? So I'm assigning that one to Chris. But you'll see there's no auto-complete, so it already has a couple users in the system, but it doesn't know that they're there. So this is one of the caveats. So, you know, DJ Herb, there's nobody in my system, but it allows me to assign it. Now, that board now is now immediately taken from that text field, and you can see these are now sorted by assignments. So Chris's tickets, CDOT tickets, now by the, ta um, the status. I'm going to move ready first, and then in progress, and then done. And then you can do it by, and I can move the tickets, right? So I can take 22, it'll jump me back to the text thing, or I can drag it in the column and it'll update the text file the same way. So either way, you end up with a text file. So if I make all of these here as ready, and I'll go back, you'll see them now move into the ready column. All right, and then last one is by tag. So I can have a, pain in the ass column, which you don't see, I stopped the clip there, but it will sort out the tickets the exact same way. So really, really simple, really, really effective, worth taking a look at. But like I said, if you're a developer, they like working in text files, right? Tell me I'm wrong. This is as simple as it gets. All right, next one, Taiga IO. I hope it's Taiga, not Taija, but let's just say it's Taiga. Taiga IO is another one as a potential Jira replacement for smaller teams. I think this one is my favorite. It's Python based. It's very intuitive if you're already familiar with Jira. Um, it's cloud hosted. That's the catch. Um, it's free for one project with up to 25 people. Um, so if you are a small shop, you're doing basically one project at a time, or you want to give it a shot, try it out. Uh, it's, it's definitely has some promise, um, in, and I'll show you a video of this, but it is, um, it's a, a different UI take that on Jira, if you're, like I said, if you're familiar with Jira. Um, there is a version you can set up on your own server, and that's free. So from my criteria, this fits in. Uh, the catch is you have to set up on your server, so again, there's some requirements. Python, uh, I think this was SQLite or PostgreSQL, I don't remember, but a very well-documented uh, installation instructions. Uh, and if you do it that way, then you have unlimited projects and unlimited users, and they're public. So anybody can see your projects. For private projects, you have to pay. That's the hook. Uh, oh, sorry, I meant on the cloud-hosted one. That's the catch. Yeah, on yours, you can lock your server down, right, so that you have it on your intranet, theoretically, or give your uh, client access. Yeah. So, yeah, you can, you can set it up. 
All right, so first thing, you come into your dashboard, like if you have a dashboard set up in Jira, you see what you're working on, the tickets you're watching. I'm gonna go to my sample Drupal project, and along the left-hand side, um, you'll see first is the last set of updates. Um, oh, this is really fast, isn't it? Let me go back. I did this too fast, I was trying to keep my time down. I have a habit of droning on and on and on. So here's the timeline of uh, updates within the project itself. So same thing like in Jira, you have the feed of activity. Same kind of thing here. Along the left-hand side are all the uh, shortcuts. So that um, summary is the uh, first thing you come into. Let's go back to play. Uh, if I go to the backlog, you're immediately presented with a burndown chart. You can do quick entry of tickets uh, as, uh, as new um, issues and literally just line break and it'll create new tickets right out of, the bat, out of the bat because you know what a pain in the ass it is to just stub out some tickets in Jira. I just want to get something in there. I don't want to go through all that crap. Um, this is really cool. Let me pause this. Oop. Okay, so not the Fibonacci part, which you can customize, which is nice, but it automatically, out of the box, is already segmenting story points into, you know, back, front, UX, design, so, which is one of the things I always have because it's 13 points. Well, 13 points of what? Five front, eight back, all back, is it design, what is it? This takes that into consideration and allows you to segment what you're doing for story points. So on projects I've worked on, it's like the development and QA is assigned story points because there's effort in doing QA. Um, you can customize all of this. Yeah, on the same ticket. And so if you vote, let's say, one, three, five, and so on, it'll aggregate it and the ticket will become 13 points. But it's broken down as one, three, five by task. Bye. Yes. I know, see? And that's why you came to this session, right? All right, so I'm just arbitrarily putting some points here. Um, and then you can, similarly, you can um, also vote tickets. Uh, uh, you can drag them into the sprints, and now I go into the sprint board, the sprint task board, it calls it. And now what's nice here is you get automatic uh, horizontal swim lanes by the task, by the ticket. But then these are the subtasks within that ticket. And if you know Jira, you know that that doesn't happen in a swim lane. They don't show up along with their parent ticket. They show up as separate tickets. Um, so for me, that's great. This is a block ticket, very obvious, right? Uh, here's the catch. So in Jira, when you block a ticket, you like link it, link a ticket, right? But you link it to the actual ticket and you have the link to the ticket becomes a real link. Here, you literally just type it in. There's no autocomplete to match it to an actual ticket or a task with that title. So I think they're working on that, but it, it doesn't exist yet. Minor detail. It's all about the details, right? So again, I'm looking, I'm waiting for this to autocomplete because I know I've got a task, another one that's, uh, that's being uh, waited, waiting for it. Um, I can um, assign requirements, I can unblock it, um, I can add files, I can add documentation, any kind of notes, it's a nice little package. Um, and you get that nice summary reporting up on the top right, and again, a burn down chart. Now I haven't done any work in this sprint, so the burn down chart doesn't exist. But the idea is that it's there at your fingertips, not another keystroke or two away. All right, so within the ticket, all right, so there's my toggle timer again. Now that's not within uh, Taiga, but the fact is that the Taiga plugin, uh, sorry, toggle plugin in Chrome recognizes that you're on Taiga and puts it in the right place. Awesome, I mean, that's great. So now you have time tracking within the ticket. Uh, and again, you can filter this and see all of your uh, issues right out of the gate. Now, here's the next one. So when you add a story, you can, or in this case, an issue, you can filter, you can assign it by what it is specifically, right? So it's either a bug, a question, or an enhancement, what the severity and the priorities are, um, right out of the gate. So that's the same, same kind of functionality. Um, you can drag and drop attachments, right? And there are those, those fields. So now it's color-coded, so when I come back to a report, you'll see them all there. 
Uh, again, like JIRA, because JIRA kind of goes hand in hand with Confluence. Very often you'll have one and not the other. This has a wiki already built in, which is really nice. So again, it does have the ability to just add pages. You can drag and drop links, pretty intuitive. It's simple, but it works. All right, and then team assignments. Now, this is interesting. Uh, Taiga was big on making this kind of, um, uh, what's the word, gamification. So what you're seeing up here on the top right, I'll hover over these, um, but you earn points for doing certain things. So for closing issues, for asking for help, for editing wiki pages, for reporting bugs, for closing tasks, all of those will enter, will give you, let's say, you know, uh, a hit power, D&D reference, sorry, and it'll give you your total power, right? So when you have multiple people, you can see who floats to the top because they're contributing to the wiki as opposed to the developers who are closing tickets. So it kind of keeps it even across the team. It's interesting. That, if anybody's using this or will use this, I'm interested to hear if that has an effect on the team or not like it's intended. Um, I'm int that intrigues me a lot. All right, let's keep going. Uh, so then the last thing just to show you is the administrative side. This just gives you like the breadth of all the things you can uh, customize here. So in this case, I'm just tweaking down the Fibonacci sequence to what we would use, nothing bigger than 13, but what's interesting here is all the other things that you can add. There's integrations, there's API endpoints, um, everything you can change, colors, the tasks, the labels. You can give these uh, custom fields like Jira, which is really nice, right? Everybody likes to have their custom fields. Um, integrations with GitHub and plugins for HipChat and Slack. So pretty much a lot of the stuff that you would want out of the box. Wealth worth investigating. Like I said, one of my favorites. It's growing on me. All right, uh, so next one. Ice Scrum, has anyone heard of this one? Okay, so this, we had the German Gantt chart. This is from uh, Germany. Uh, Ice Scrum is Java-based. The problem is that the server version is running on Java 8, but Mac, the one that you can download as a community version for yourself is only compiled for 7. And if you're on a current OS X, you're running 8. So you have to downgrade your Java to 7. So for me, that was a deal breaker. Um, I'm, it's a free community license. It's worth playing with if you really want to try it out because I'm gonna do due diligence, I'll show you the little video. I'm not sold on it, I'm really not sold on it. Um, there's a pro version that adds a roadmap and icebox features, which is one of the other things that I really look for as an add-on that, that Jira is just starting to get into with the uh, portfolio. Um, but for a local version, if you have a server, then you can run Java. It's worth trying. I'm not crazy about it, and I'm really not crazy about the UI. It, it looks like a Java app. And uh, so I'm not even like, this is the quick and dirty of the tour as you click through. But what I want to what I want to show you, first of all, is it's, it's kind of clunky. Um, the thought behind it, the structure is there, it, the UI is not. It's not, in, it's not completely intuitive. Um, the idea here, I hate to diss a software. I mean, I like it, it's, I appreciate the effort, but it's just not there after the stuff I showed you. Um, it gives you a lot of flexibility in terms of setting up the cards. There is this um, uh, nice planning uh, chart, but it's, it's really a lot of work to set up out of the box. It, would, it takes a lot of effort. Um, and that to me is a, is a, is a big minus. Um, but there is a lot of features in here, a lot of custom customization options. It's like, it's gotta be really worth the effort. So um, if you're willing to live with Java 7, you have a machine you can spin this up on, download it, install, fire up the uh, jar file, um, and, and give, it a, give it a go. Okay, let me get to the good stuff here. So here I'm just dragging tickets in the right order. Um, you can then do some sprint planning and you see that it automatically assigns, they're all sized the same. So if the tickets were sized differently, they'll take up more room. But you can basically do some uh, rudimentary sprint planning, which is nice. 
It's just, it's a lot of work to get to this, a lot. I had one project set up and I'm like, I can't show you I have started a project, I'll just go back and do the tour. Like I, yeah, so if I gave up, I figured you would probably too. Um, and we have over here, that was the other one. It, it gives you a nice um, sprint planning this part. So this is one of those things that, you know, JIRA doesn't give you out of the box um, that sprint level view, unless you consider the sprints, you know, vertically in a backlog. Here it gives it to you in AHA style, if you're familiar with that project, which is not open source nor free, but worth investigating. Um, it's a nice project management tool that does this kind of effect where you can drag and drop tickets once you've got them ready and assign them so you have like a filtered view of all the work you're gonna do on this epic and then all the work we're gonna do on this epic and mix them back together. This does that, but like I said, it's a lot of work to get to that. AHA costs money but it integrates with Jira, it does, and it does automatic updates. So you can create stories in AHA, and they import into Jira, or if you update stories in Jira, and they backport into AHA. But for planning, you make AHA your master, and Jira just for like sprint level work. So, okay. Let's get through the end of this. Uh, there was, where is it? Yeah, your release planning, okay. All right, last one. Bitcoins were first minted at the Mint in Philadelphia in 1792. Bet you didn't know that. All right, uh, two other tools that I don't go into. Uh, they're worth looking at, they're also free. One is Taskboard, it's a GitHub project. Another one is Kanban tool, but it only lives you, lets you do two boards with two users, so I don't know what the point is. Um, Taskboard is worth playing with, um, but I, it didn't make quite the cut in terms of time. Now, there are still more out there um, that I just physically didn't have enough time to go back and do. Um, the next two on my list that I'm really looking forward to are, and I'm not even sure how to pronounce it, Tuliep, the fourth one on the left, and Agilefont, the last one on the right. Those two look really, really promising. Um, so you can expect, I'll have to do one more of these presentations and go through the rest of these. Um, of that list that I've gone through, uh, and Redmine is out there, Project Libre and Libre Plan are like very adamant, open source, contributed, community-based projects. Um, they're not quite there. Tuliep and Agile, Agile Fan's relatively new. They are pretty slick, pretty, pretty neat. Uh, two more worth mentioning. Um, I'll publish this PDF, it's massive, it's 100 megabytes, I don't know how I'm gonna upload it. Um, two more that I wanna go through, uh, and they're really for Kanban, they're neither open source nor free, but they're really nice, so it's worth mentioning. Um, this one is nice because it has built-in um, integration, again, with GitHub, Slack, and HipChat. Um, it does a cycle time on the cards that are on the board. Um, it, it, it's nice, I mean, it looks really, really nice. It's very clean, and it's like a very pure Kanban board. So what I mean by that, if you look at that third, second column, you'll see implementation two of one. So real true Kanban. There cannot be more than one ticket in that state because you only have the capacity to do one of those tickets in that, in that column. You can customize what that is, but the fact that it's showing you in red at the top, two of one, you're over capacity. You can actually have it I believe this is the one you can have it restrict. You can't actually drag a ticket into that column until the column is free, which is like, you know, even more enforcement. Um, it's a little overkill, but the fact that it's there. You know, the red ticket on the bottom left is blocked. The ticket up on the top right is uh, completed. Very, very simple. It's all it does, you know, and roadmap planning, um, which is basically just to help you document what it is that you're doing. And you'll see everywhere in these tickets um, I didn't do the video because it's, it's, there's not enough to show. When you go to create a new card, it walks you through the process. Like, why is this a ticket? What's the business purpose? Why are you doing it? Which is that question you have to ask your product owners all the time. Well, what's the point of this ticket? Why are, you know, you want the site to look good, you want it to perform fast, you don't want to lose customers. What is that driving reason? And that will help them write it. So this is really like software geared for a product owner, not, more, not a project manager. The other one is Assembla. Um, this is nice because it has a really nice uh, integration with GitHub. It looks nice, um, but it costs money. 
So uh, for $24 a month, you can get 12 users. You can play with it for free. Um, again, um, I think I go through a couple of boards here. So this is just a list of tasks. And then you can um, do again uh, planning. I'm going to move you know, a certain number of tickets into my backlog. These are going to be ready for me to work on. Um, and there was some other reporting. Uh, where did my notes go? I lost my notes. Um, but it will give you um, a really nice set of reporting tools a la JIRA. Um, so it's worth mentioning for that. Let's come back to. Um, right, so now I'm in my sprint board, right? So I've got tickets that are ready to go, and you can adjust columns. You'll scroll to the right. You can, you know, set this up whatever you want it to be. Set up your milestones. Gives you in the immediate progress indicators on the right. You have a calendar view with those milestones in there. You can publish this out as a calendar, no big deal. The reporting is really nice, very comprehensive. A lot of the basic stuff that you need. I really like down here at the bottom the stuck tasks, right? Which is something you probably do as a filter or in Jira if you're familiar is the dot, 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 at the bottom of your tickets, right? Dot, 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 okay. Nobody ever has those tickets. Um, uh, the last thing here, this is one of those wish things from JIRA, bulk update, right? I want to go in and I want to make all my tickets ready or I want to make them all something. I want to assign them all a label and if you're familiar with JIRA, you have to go through, find a filter, select the tickets, go through the thing, I want to edit the issue, I want to do this, and it's clunky. Here it's all in one page, very nice, very slick. So this is the kind of what I wish JIRA would do. Okay. Um, last thing with Assembla, just really quick, it connects to everything. Um, again, you know, you get what you pay for. Um, Webhooks, Twitter, I don't know why you would want to connect it to Twitter. I closed the ticket, yay, okay. Um, last one, really quick, Gemini uh, from Countersoft is also a nice one. Um, it also has integrated chat, also costs money, $10 a month. Um, but you can run it on your server, but you need an enterprise license. So, yeah, not great. Um, but it looks slick. Um, so it's much more like a graphical Excel version of Jira. You can drag and drop tickets around. I'm not, I'm not impressed. It's, you know, this is, and you know why? Because it's Windows. It's totally geared for Windows. So, sorry, I'm a Mac guy, but this is like designed for a .NET environment, development environment. This is not for Drupal. Okay, let's move on. So let me spend the last uh, couple of minutes. It's the end of the day. I know it's six o'clock. Um, I do have a couple more slides I'm going to go through in really rapid succession. Um, I have this as part of another presentation, and I'll make the shameless plug. I'm at the Aqua booth tomorrow afternoon from four to six doing a longer version of this. So if you have questions, you want to hear the whole spiel, and you want to leave, um, make sure and come and see me then. Uh, what I love about JIRA, which is what you love about JIRA, are all the other things that I just showed you that those projects do not do, that this does do. Um, and what I want to show you are the key things that I think are the most important things you should be doing in JIRA if you're not doing it already. So first question is, who here is using JIRA? Okay, so hopefully this will help you guys. Um, first of all, components. If you're not using them, use them. It's just another tag. But from a Drupal perspective, if you have a content type, if you have a ticket that is associated with that content type, use components to organize it because it could be front end, it could be back end, it could be for testing. You'll have a way to organize all that work quickly and easily. So using something like analytics or image editing will allow you to find, let's say for regression testing or subsetting QA behat tests based on the content type or based on the uh, work that's being done. So this is like my list, what I use for content types, uh, for components. I'll publish, like, I'll publish, you don't have to write this down, I'll, pu I'll publish this PDF. Next thing, add some custom fields. Developer and team, those are not out of the box. If you don't have them already, make it a user and like a select list so that you can identify who is working on the ticket. Was it a specific developer? Is it a specific team? Team A, team B? 
you can also go back and do reporting and seeing what the developers have been working on in previous sprints. Maybe they need to rotate their work. They've been doing all front end work. They need to do some back end for practice. This is a way to keep track of that. Uh, another one is if you're using multiple environments, set up a field for branch so that everybody else knows where that ticket is because you'll have it buried in a comment. Yeah, this is going out on the you know, Dev 3A environment. Make it a field, real easy. So then the QA and UAT people know where to look. All right, this is a fun one. So I'm gonna do this really quick. Um, if you're not doing it already, use uh, color coding in the backlog and create sprints in your backlog. So what this allows you to do is see everything much more easily. The sprints in the backlog, if you have an open sprint, make other sprints for future sprints for planning, right? You're in sprint one, create another sprint two and start putting tickets into it. In developer parlance, it would be like your fixed version, which you can assign separately, but from a sprint backlog perspective, now you can see how many points you have assigned for effort in those future sprints and assign the priority within that sprint. For the color coding, what I'm showing here, right, you see this gold ticket, purple ticket, blue ticket. All that is, and because it's not showing up in a ticket here, if you go to the, if you go to the field, you'll see I assigned it a team. So I have three teams on my project. Each of those colors corresponds to the team. To set this up, you just go into the card colors and use a query and say, hey, my team equals blank. You can use that also for setting up swim lanes. So in this case, I'm gonna do real quick, labels equal stretch, and any ticket that's marked as stretch will show up in a separate swim lane now up at the top. So you can keep your work separated and still color coded so I can see right away a stretch ticket is on the goal team, right? Nice. Okay, next one, time spent. Two ways to skin this cat, right? We could use toggle. Um, I like to make it a separate field and you can make it uh, a required field, so when it's in a transition, it's required by the person making the transition to complete that field. Um, you can do it for QA, you can do it for development. Does that make sense? You'll see what I mean in a second. So this way, okay, that ticket's in progress, and so when I go to submit it, right, this is my workflow. If you can see here, I'm in progress, and I'm gonna submit it to peer review or to merge ready. By doing that transition, I add a field and it requires me to put in that number, 2.5. And then again, for the QA, once they've tested the issue and approve or reject it, they have to put in their time. And now it's automatic, you can't make that transition without completing that field. So this forces them to put a number in. The catch is they have to report a number and they could be pulling a number out of their butt, right? Um, and if it's iterating more than one time, the number stays in the same place. It doesn't automatically add it. You have to manually do the math. Like it says 2.5, I added another hour, I have to make it 3.5. So it's just a matter of educating the users to remember to increment that number manually. Make sense? Okay. Uh, last one, and then we're done. Jira has a REST API. This is my favorite, because I'm a nerd. If you query the REST API with a JQL string, you can get a JSON back, which will give you all the details of your ticket. And in my case, I don't even need all the details. I just need that count. I just want the number of tickets that match the query. So what I can do is make a Google Sheet, go to script editor, and I can pass queries directly from my sheet and update the tickets, right? Or, you know, well, what, what's the tickets that are being updated? So what do I mean by this? Build out a spreadsheet, and using a function, I'm gonna ask for all the tickets that are in that sprint ID, right? Sprint 29. So that's the basic one. You can add to it, right? So give me all the tickets that were reopened from QA. What were all the tickets that were reopened from UAT? What were all the tickets that are incomplete? What were all the tickets that are over eight points? Whatever query it is that you want, now you can go through and build an automatic report and you just use one function call, it goes to JIRA, queries that number, I don't need to know what the tickets are, I just need a count. And so that whole list of numbers there are all those breakouts, right? Number of tickets, the number of stories, the number of bugs, uh, I don't remember what FE was. Uh, how many of these were reopened? How many of these were reopened from QA? How many of these were reopened from UAT? 
how many of them are closed. And if you have that, now you can build this nice little chart on the bottom that says, show me the percentage of all the tickets that were reopened from QA and UAT in the last 12 sprints. And you can see there's you know, spikes and valleys and so on, but you get reporting and this you don't get out of JIRA. And really, really, you, the world is your oyster with this. So this script is in GitHub. It's really easy. You just have to put in your credentials and pass what it is that you want to ask, build a sheet. Um, if you have any questions about it, like I said, I'll be here after this or come see me tomorrow. I'll show you how to set it up. Very easy, really powerful. Remember, this is a per sprint reporting tool, not an intra sprint reporting tool. So it's really only useful when you've run more than one sprint and you want to get a histor historical data for, let's say, 10 sprints, 12 sprints, whatever it is. For intra sprint reporting, I'm working on that script next. That's a little more complicated. You know, how much time do I have? So um, what we learned today, this is everything we went through. Um, all my key things about uh, uh, the tools out there for charting and planning and pointing. Uh, we talked about tools for Kanban and sprint boards. I told you what to do in JIRA using components, um, custom fields, leverage the JIRA REST APIs. I have more up my sleeve, like I said, come see me tomorrow. Um, these are all the projects that we went through. Um, I'll put the uh, URLs in there. And like I said, I'll be there tomorrow afternoon. So come on down and, and chat. Um, and that's it. Any questions? I'm sure you have questions. All right. And so obligatory, I have to give you the corrections. These were not the facts. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Thanks, guys. Sure. So um, JIRA does it automatically. You can, uh, if you reject a ticket from the QA state, so in, the, in my workflow, let me come back to it. Uh, right, I think it was here. I hope it's here. I'll find it. Um, so if you're, if you, once you have your workflow set up in JIRA, um, you have a QA state that the tickets are in, and you, in the workflow, the two options from that state are to accept it or pass it, which then moves it to, let's say, a ready for deploy or a UAT state, or it sends it back to in progress. That sending it back to in progress when you set up that transition is a reopen. And so JIRA will automatically know that because the ticket was, quote, re reopened. Um, you can phrase the query, depending on what the workflow is, to say, it went into this state from this state and do it that way and that'll give you the same that same approach so you could do exactly and it, it's completely based on the way your workflow is set up but as long as you have those match for example what i would do is do the queries in jira first like when you're searching your issues with advanced uh with advanced search uh this makes sense let's do it live right because that's more fun anyway uh, hopefully this is big enough. Okay, so. Okay, one second, make this bigger. Man, this is, there we go. That work? Okay, good. All right, so. Um, if I go to my issues, right, we're going to search for an issue. I would test the, test the queries out first and say, you know, uh, um, project equals SP1, right, because that's my project. And type equals story and re, uh, let's say, um, Opened, uh, not reopened. Uh, let me think. What was my query again? I totally forgot. You can you can specify the original state and the destination state, um, and if the query works in your query search here, copy and paste it along with you know rearrange whatever it is the project or the sprint, add that in the query in the Google Sheet. 
and you sh it should work. So if it works, if it will work here, it will work there. Give me one second, I'm gonna find this. Yeah, whatever, whatever you want. So uh, let me find a good example here. Oh, status, right, duh, okay. So, and status changed to closed. Oh, sorry, sorry. Okay. Uh, where does it really do that every time? Sorry about that. Okay. So, uh, type equals story and status is change to close. So if I do change to QA, it will give me all the tickets that went into QA, but I don't say from where. So if I say to QA from, and then what are the states that I could do it from? From UAT or from uh, merge ready or whatever the previous state is, that will give you that specific transition. So all you have to do is just go back to your workflow take those two states, put them in here. And so in this case, SP1250, this is the workflow I have set up. So QA came from either merge ready or two reopened, right? So if I have a reopened state, I'm, that's all I'm doing in that other query because you get to reopen from all other states. If, the, if your workflow is much more you know, simple than this, just use whatever that state is as your, you know, uh, as your measurement point. So it could be that it's closed and it was rejected. In my case, it goes back to reopen. If your state is that it goes back to new, you know, say that it changed to new from closed, and that'll give you that total list. The catch is that in this ticket, in this query, I'm not filtering by the sprint. I'm only looking at it as, as across the entire project. What you'll do then in, in Google Sheets is then add sprint in, if I can type, in whatever that sprint is. In my case, let's say one, right, at sprint. And so, oops. So those are the tickets in my sprint one that had gone to QA at some point. And that doesn't do me any good because they're not in QA right now. One of them is, but they've already gone through QA. That's the problem is that the query doesn't know where in the workflow that happened. So again, another reason why having that workflow set up with that common state or wherever that destination is gonna be, however you have it set up, as long as that query matches, if you get this kind of result, what you'll get on the Google Sheet will now be just five because there were five matches. And iterate that across all your sprints and boom, you have a report. It's, it's crazy when you start thinking about it, but it's like really nice tool to have, so. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, in this script, like I'm running it right now, this is the rest out of my local right here on my laptop. This is what it was in there. So it doesn't matter where it is. Um, just as long as you have the URL and you have authentication. Yeah, yep. Right, yeah, I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just pulling, I'm not even, doing any kind of pass or creating new tickets, it's purely for reporting. Yeah. I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible, so, yeah. Thanks, guys. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, it is, if you go in like the history, you'll see that, you know, it went to this transition by this user on this date, and it keeps all that stuff logged, and all you're doing is just querying to get that result. Um, and when you have a sprint with like 50 tickets in it, you know, who the hell remembers which one did what? But let's say for reopen.